Hey, what is up, mortals? Welcome to part 4 season 1 of What If Izuku Had a Villain Quirk. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. The trio parted ways while Crimson Eyes once again stared at green hair and hate. A promise of penance in Katsuki's eyes as he went on his own way home. A promise that's importance would wane as a foreboding swear made its presence known as eyes of a similar tint watches video feed of UA students and all might. A question is propositioned, asking an opinion of how the public would react to the death of the symbol of peace. The next day's beginning was nearly identical to the past two for Izuku Midori. The same process of getting up, dressed, and off to school. The only difference was the boy was preemptively preparing his mind for whatever chaos would occur during the hero course. He arrives at the Grandiose Academy only to meet a sea of reporters and interviewers who pounced on him without hesitation. He was bombarded with question after question until an arm yanked him out of reach, the familiar voice of Midnight echoing out. Boy, leave my student alone you animals. Find someone else to harass. She led him into the facility before they got roped into any more media exposure and sighed in relief. I saw you coming in and ran in front of Shota to get to you. I remembered how when you're anxious you tend to leak your fear toxin. A grateful smile flashes across the juniper-haired boy's face as he thanks her. Nimari just laughs and shoes the boy towards the school so he wouldn't be late so Nezu wouldn't get onto her. The sound of the defenses of UA triggering caused a cackle to echo out of the woman as she imagined the faces of the reporters. People should just learn to keep their noses out of things that don't concern them Midnight muttered as she rolled her eyes hating how they were basically harassing the staff and students of UA. She followed her private pupil into the large building that was her workplace. A blue-haired figure who witnessed the whole ordeal smirked and walked off, chuckling as the reporters complained with a much more sinister tone. As the students of Wana were interrupted from their conversations by Aizawa cleared his throat, they quickly quieted down. Good, now that you've finally all shut up I have an important announcement, one that will affect your paths and lives as heroes forever. His tone was serious and frightened all of his students as chills went down their spines. It's time for you to pick a class representative. A collective sigh of relief was heard from the class, then the pandemonium started. Shouts came from almost every student in the classroom, each one believing they would be the superior choice for class representative. A strict voice cut through all of the noise, turning heads to Ida as he tried to remind his classmates of the severe importance of their choice and how not everyone would cut it for the position. He promptly proposes the idea of having an election for being representative, which was instantly criticized because of how little the students knew about each other. It would most likely end up being everyone voting for each other. Tenya explained that that would mean that those who had more than one vote would be the most trusted person to lead the class. The class reluctantly agreed and a vote was taken. Ada shaking with a myriad of emotion as he realized he had no votes. Sato spoke up, reminding him of what the class had told him earlier with clear proof in front of them showing they were right. The board revealed both Momo and Midoriya tied together with two votes. The two went up to the front of the classroom, with the shorter of the two shaking slightly from being a center of attention. With prodding from her friend, Momo was announced as the class representative and her green-haired acquaintance was declared her deputy. A bright smile spread across her face throughout the entire day around until lunch hour where it faded to a softer one. A certain tall, blue-haired boy approached the two of them and offered congratulations to both of them, accepted with grace and radical humility to the respective people in the duo. Yeyarazu offered the boy a seat next to them which at first politely declined, the boy feeling as though he would intrude. It wouldn't be any trouble at all Ida. A warm smile lit up on the Juniperette's face as the boy took a seat. Small talk started up between the trio before Momo glanced at Tenya. Ada, is it correct that you hail from the Ida family? The one with a legacy of being heroes her question caused the male to choke upon hearing someone knew of his heritage. A nod from him confirmed her query and an impressed look came across her face as an amazed one flashes across the other males. Wow, you're from a hero family. That explains your skill over your quirk. Thoughts once again swarm the mind of the harlequin-eyed boy before one takes center stage. Wait, your quirk looked so familiar when I first saw it and you being from a hero family like him confirms it. A sweat drop ran down the side of his face at how quickly he was being read by the duo he sat with. He clears his throat and nods his head once more to confirm the theory. Indeed I am part of the Ida family of heroes and my brother is the hero in Genium. He stands up with a determined gleam in his eyes and a bright smile on his lips I plan on being just like my elder brother and making my family proud. Soft applause at his resolve came from his two classmates as he took a seat. The applause were suddenly drowned out by an ear-splitting alarm as a robotic voice announced a level 3 security breach of UA. A mass panic spread throughout the entire school as the triad of students were swept into a wave. Yeyarazu and Midoriya attempted to get free of the cramped hallway only to disappear in the sea of adolescence they were trapped in. 
The blue-haired pupil searched for them only to be shoved against a window, eyes searching around still until they spy something outside a window, reporters. It quickly dawned on him that the reason the alarm went off was simply because the reporters found a way in. He glanced around and saw Kaminari and Kirishima attempt to calm the tsunami of teens, only to be swept up as well. He desperately searches for some way to let the population of students know what was actually happening when he caught sight of Yuraka, struggling to get free of her ensnarement between students. He shifts his way through the crowd, an idea clear in his mind as he calls out to her. Yuraka san The brunette looks up to the taller boy as he reaches out to her I need your help to stop this. I need you to use your quirk on me and make me float above everyone else. A nod came from the caramel-eyed girl as she stretched out and slapped the outstretched hand, causing him to immediately take flight. He lifted up the slacks of his uniform to reveal the engines embedded in his calves and activated his quirk, propelling himself forward to the exit sign and slamming harshly into a wall. He took a deep breath as he reminded himself to be confident, clear, and concise in his announcement. Everyone please calm down. The alarm was triggered by the media that you can see outside. He stared down at everyone looking up at him. We are students of UA, the best of the best. We cannot let ourselves fall into a blind panic so easily. Finally, the panic seems to ease as one of them even announces the arrival of the police, signaling the end of the security breach. Relief floods the entire population of students filter out of the hallway and back to whichever class they were supposed to be in at that moment. In Class 1A, Momo stood before them all with her forest-haired friend by her side as she announced that they would begin deciding on positions for other class officers, but that her deputy had an announcement, allowing him to step forward. I, I would like to step down and allow Tenya to take over my spot as voice was shaky as he spoke he was able to get the attention of the entire school and set them straight. Such an achievement makes it obvious he should lead our class. The class chimed in with affirmations, causing Ada to hop up and happily accept the opportunity. Meanwhile, at the gates to UA, Midnight and two other staff members stared at the damaged security wall that the media got through. A voice comes from a figure covered in what appeared to be white, analyzing the situation. This had to be the work of a villain, but the motive is a mystery. Was this a show of power, or a declaration of war? Silence reigns over the trio as a sense foreboding fills the air. The next morning was a busy day for pro heroes Kamui Woods, Mount Lady, and a less known hero. They were fighting a large, well-built villain who was currently holding several people hostage, threatening to kill them. A familiar voice cuts through the standoff as a figure in a yellow suit knocks the villain and saves the civilians before quickly making his way to another rescue, fretting internally about being late to his job at UA Academy. All Might's mind was scattered as thoughts of his successor filled his mind, absent-mindedly rescuing those in danger before heading off to yet another rescue mission. Elsewhere, Aizawa was announcing to the class that their training that day would be different, with three instructors monitoring their class. A certain shy, Greenette wondered quietly if the increase had anything to do with the break-in that had recently occurred. Siro, a lanky, black-haired male, speaks up to ask what exactly the training would be. We will be doing rescue training. For example, shipwrecks and the like he holds out a card with bold, blue letters saying rescue. A buzz of excitement fills the class at the prospect of proving their abilities in an environment like that. Their teacher announces that they would be doing the training at an off-campus site and that they would be riding a bus there. He adds that they can wear whatever they wished but to keep in mind that they weren't used to them yet and it might impede their abilities. Izuku stood with the rest of his class as his raven-haired friend questioned why he only had part of his costume on, pointing to the goggles and devices that attached to his wrists with tubes leading to tanks. He laughed nervously and reminded her of how badly his costume was wrecked and joked of how at least he was lucky enough for the special tech in his costume to survive. A sudden whistle called their attention to an armored student, clearly their blue-haired classmate, who asked them to board the bus in a very specific way. That method was eventually scrapped as the bus was revealed to have an openly modeled format. The emitter quirk owner sat in the open area with several other students with Asui on his left and Sato on his right. The green-themed girl turned to her right as conversation started and asked about the juniper-haired boy's quirk, only having known about him emitting some sort of gas. Other students chime in as well, Kirishima saying that the effect of the gas must be super manly. I, I wouldn't call it that really, my quirk is hallucinogen and it can be pretty dangerous. He was prompted to continue by nearly every student on the bus, even a certain heterochromatic teen listened and I if my toxin is inhaled or absorbed into the bloodstream, the person will be forced to live through hallucinations of their worst fear. The boy was fully prepared to hear cries of how that was a villainous quirk and how, with a quirk like that, he didn't belong here, but was surprised to hear the opposite. He heard praise of how cool his quirk was and how he could potentially capture villains without a sweat. The small talk started turning sour as Tsuyu brought up Katsuki's bad attitude, ticking the blonde off as Kaminari agreed, a skirmish shaping up to happen in the vehicle. Suddenly, Shota called out for them to quit it, pointing out that they had arrived. 
A giant, dome-shaped building lay in front of them with a familiar sight there. Pro Hero 13, a very popular rescue hero who welcomed them with open arms. They promised the class that they would have an unforgettable experience there, and that they would. That they would indeed. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. Our discord is an all-around fantastic place to be. Rather you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits, we're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So, thank you all for watching and have a great day.